Welcome to your favourite day of the week everyone, and does anyone remember 2012? The year the world became obsessed with a song called Gangnam Style, as well as a campaign that went globally viral in order to stop Ugandan war criminal Kony, and of course, who could forget the end of the Mayan calendar on December the 21st, where everyone thought the date would mark the end of the world. Unfortunately, the world didn't actually end on that date, and now in some awful turn of events, you're here listening to me. I bet you wish it did end now. Predictions that cite an apocalyptic event that would result in the extinction of humanity, collapse of civilization, or the planet getting absolutely yeeted into the shadow realm have been around since Jesus popped out the womb. But there was something different about 2012 that just got a lot more people worked up. Of course the world wasn't too unfamiliar to cataclysmic scenarios, as just 12 years prior, the technology induced apocalypse of Y2K was threatening to bring down worldwide infrastructures due to computers inability to distinguish between the date 2000 and 1900. However, January the 1st came around and the only thing that happened is that some people's bus tickets failed to get validated. Oh no! Anyway, 2012 saw the end of the 5126 year Mesoamerican long count calendar, and all kind of end of the world predictions were thrown about, such as the Earth colliding with a mythical planet called Nibiru, the appearance of a supermassive black hole causing the disappearance of the solar system, or a devastating natural disaster, among others. So, why would a calendar ending for some people who lived 2000 years ago signal the end of humanity? I mean, our wall calendars change all the time to January, and the only thing that happens is that people will say they have New Year's resolutions, but they fail them after two days. Well, there is no evidence that the Mayans could predict the future, otherwise they may have been more prepared for the Spanish conquest that happened and wiped them out in the 16th century. You fucked up there guys, didn't you? But before their downfall at the hands of the Europeans, the Mayans had developed one of the most advanced and complex civilizations in the Western Hemisphere. Located in the Yucatan Peninsula, the Mayan civilization had one of the most sophisticated and developed writing systems in Mesoamerica. They could build elaborate cities without modern building techniques, and they also made extremely meticulous observations of celestial bodies. The Mayans developed their cal- <coughs> I wanna cry. The Mayans developed their calendar to maximum sophistication recording lunar and solar cycles, as well as eclipses and movements of the planets with great accuracy. Their calendar was tied to rituals and was central in religious practices, and consisted of several cycles of different lengths. I hope you're ready for some top tier pronunciations of Mayan words here, so buckle your seatbelts everybody. The 260 day count was called the Slokzin, in which it combined 20 named days with another cycle of 13 named days called the Tracina. The original purpose of the Solxin is unknown, with no obvious relation to any astronomical or geophysical cycle, but it may have been related to the time of human pregnancy. The Harb was a 365 day calendar which consisted of 18 months of 20 days each, plus an additional 5 nameless days at the end of the year, known as the Wayeb, which were thought to be a dangerous time by the Mayans. Every 52 years, the Solxin and the Harb would synchronise, and this would be counted as one interval called the Calendar Round and the calendar round would reset itself after every interval, just like a clock. The calendar round measured time in an endless loop, so it was a bad way to accurately record events that had happened in history. To specify dates over longer periods than the 52 years of the calendar round, the Mayans used the long count calendar. The long count calendar measured time from a fixed start point, which is generally calculated to be August the 11th in 3114 BC, which to the Maya believed to be the day of creation of the world in its current form. Form. It grouped the days into cycles, which is another chance to show off my fantastic Mayan linguistic skills, and they are as follows. The Bakhtun, which was 144,000 days. The Katun, which was 7,200 days. The Tun, which was 360 days. The Winau, which was 20 days. And the Kin, which was one day. 
So for example, a date that was 25 days from the calendar's base date, it would be called 0.0.0.1.5. And a day that was 144,000 days from the base date would be called 1.0.0.0.0. Who knows? And so forth. Since the long count dates are unambiguous, it was particularly well suited for use on monuments. So why was this Mayan calendar and a bunch of seemingly unpronounceable words important to a date in December and why would it signal everyone dying? In Maya literature, there is a strong tradition of world ages, but this may be open to interpretation due to distortions of the records. The Popol Vol, a Mayan book compiling details of creation accounts, claims we are living in the fourth world. It goes on to describe the gods creating three failed worlds, followed by a successful fourth in which humanity was placed. In the Maya Long Count calendar, the previous world ended after 13 Bactons, and the zero date was set at the point marking the end of the third world and beginning of the fourth, which was August 11th, 3114 BC, as previously mentioned. The completion of 13 Bactons was known as the Grand Cycle, and the Grand Cycle later from the zero date takes us to December the 21st, 2012. 20th century scholars claimed the completion of a great period of 13 Bactons would have been of the utmost significance to the Maya. There is a suggestion that Armageddon would overtake the degenerate peoples of the world and all creation on the final day of the 13th Bacton. Thus, our present universe would be annihilated when the great cycle of the Long Count reaches completion. While the completion of the 13th Bacton has been interpreted to have some importance, it is actually not known what significance it would have had to the Maya, as most of their inscriptions are purely historical and they do not make any prophetic predictions. Except that one. That's the only one they have actually made, so... I don't make the rules. There have only been two references found in Mayan inscriptions relating to the end of the 13th Bactum, but none of them actually cite an apocalyptic event. There is even references for dates even further in the future than 2012, such as 4772 AD, which marked the completion of the first Picton, 20 times one Bactum. So it seems we've reached a bit of an impasse here. The Maya seemingly have no idea about this end of the world date, and it's all a bit of he said, she said, she said, he said, Sally sells seashells by the seashore. Because it was a whole bunch of nothing. No one actually paid any attention to the 13th Bacton until around 1975, when it became a hot topic of New Age authors. In Frank Waters' 1975 book, Mexico Mystique, he miscalculated the date to the 24th of December 2011, but announced the world will be destroyed by catastrophic earthquakes. The doomsday ball was now rolling, and another book in the same year actually got the date right. I'm so happy. Dennis and Terence McKenna's The Invisible Landscape made note that the end of the 13th Bacton took place on the winter solstice, when the sun will be in constellation Sagittarius only about 3 degrees from the galactic centre, which is within 2 degrees of the ecliptic. They continued by saying, because the winter solstice node is processing, it is moving closer and closer to the point on the ecliptic where it will eclipse the galactic centre. And you're probably all wondering, well what the hell does that mean? And so was I at first. So I paid a quick trip to NASA's website and I soon found it was all a bunch of bollocks. Well I may have used some more colourful language than NASA, but that's basically the gist of it. In reality, the event described will never actually happen. 1987 saw broader interest in 2012 grow as author Jose Arguelles stated the 13th Bacton period was linked to an invisible beam from the centre of the Milky Way galaxy. 
It was argued that the Maya knew when we would enter and lead this beam and set up the 13th Bacton cycle to mark the occasion. Arguelles asserted the beam operated as invisible galactic life threads that linked people, the planet, the sun and the centre of the galaxy and that passage through this beam would result in total synchronisation of individuals plugged into Earth's magnetic battery. Of course, if you went back in time and asked the Mayans what they thought of this, they would have completely laughed in your face, as there is no evidence in Mayan tradition nor modern astronomy that supports belief of such a beam. Despite all evidence pointing away from any global catastrophe, the December the 21st became a popular subject in media speculation on many pages of the internet. Of course people interpreted the supposed galactic alignment apocalyptically, claiming it would create a combined gravitational effect between the sun and a supermassive black hole at the centre of our galaxy causing havoc on earth. Um, no, but it was a solid effort at a doomsday theory. Others claimed about a reversal in Earth's magnetic field, triggered by a massive solar flare equal to 100 billion atomic bombs, that was supposedly supported by observations that Earth's magnetic field was weakening, and the arrival of the next solar maximum which was expected in 2012. End times theorists got quite close on this one, as on July the 23rd 2012, a massive solar storm that could have caused worldwide power outages came within 9 days of striking the earth. Planet X, or Nibiru, was next up in our doomsday shortlist. The secret planet, four times the size of earth, was also prophesied to collide with our planet and many believers accused NASA of deliberately covering up evidence of its existence. However, this planet seemingly never appeared either that year. No surprises there. As the 2012 phenomenon became widely spread, more and more outlandish theories arose. My personal favourite theory I found is that the Mayans were taking instructions from aliens when developing their calendar, and the end of their calendar was signal when the aliens would take over the world. Top marks for that one. The vision of this day in December contained everything from biblical plagues like fires and floods, all the way to more extravagant catastrophes such as planetary collisions and extreme global warming. A survey conducted in May 2012 of 16,000 people found 10% believed the Mayan calendar marked the end of the world, and sales of private underground blast shelters increased noticeably in 2009 in the US. The rise of Twitter and Facebook saw more people exposed to these crazy scenarios than ever before. 2012 became a huge cultural phenomenon nom 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 as everyone was looking to cash in on the event, with TV shows, movies, books and even songs produced to mark the occasion. In mid-December 2012, an internet hoax claimed that singer Psy was one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse and when Gangnam Style hit 1 billion views on YouTube, the world would end. Open Gangnam Style. To be honest, with all these strange conspiracy theories, I respect that one the most. There's at least some creativity in that. December the 21st came and went, and as everyone with a brain expected, nothing actually happened, except that the Mayan calendar rolled over to begin its 13th Bacton. I'm sure if their civilization was still around today, it would have been a massive cause for celebration for them. And do you know what, Mayans? I'm with you. Here's to December the 21st, 2012. Ugh, those Mayans knew how to party. So thank you all for watching everyone. I've been Jamie's Day, your favourite day of the week and this was 2012. The apocalypse that never happened. Make sure you like the video as the Mayans did predict and if you haven't yet, give that subscribe button a little tickle. If you want to see more of me, I stream on Twitch every week at twitch.tv slash Jamie's Day. So go over there and give me a follow. And if you subscribe, you can get to name one of these lovely ducks. I'm going to go enjoy 
the 21st of December like the Mayans never could, and I'll see you all next time. Peace.